Hello and welcome to another geometry video. This one's entitled, uh, or titled rather, Angles in a Circle. So what we're going to find out is when different types of things, and sorry if I'm talking loud, I don't know where my, my uh, headphone recording device is. So hopefully the mic picks it up and it's fine. So if it's too loud, then just adjust the volume down and hopefully it'll be fine and you don't have to adjust the volume up too much. But when different line segments, so chords are a line segment, secants are different segments, diameters is a special type of a chord, radii, etc., intersect with a circle, you get angles. Okay, and there are four different types of angles, as you see here. Okay, and they all have their own relationship to the arc. So there is a relationship between the angle that is formed, or the type of angle, where it is, where the angle is formed and the arc that it is formed that is intersected rather by the different types of segments that we're going to talk about. Okay, so there's four different types and they all have their own relationships. So starting off with the basic and working towards the more um, less basic. <clears throat> so when two radii intersect, that's called a central angle. Okay, so two radii intersect in a central angle. Okay, and of course, radii, or radiuses, depending on how you like to say it, are formed from the center of the circle, and they touch the outside of the circle. So there we have ourselves a central angle. So this thing right here, an angle formed by these two radii, that is your central angle. Okay, formed in the center of the circle. So here's your angle, a central angle. So this right here is the arc that it intercepts. So this is the arc that it's related to. So this central angle has a relationship to this intercepted arc. Okay, so let's come over here and let's see what that happens to be. So here we have our central angle page and I was supposed to have this hidden already. So here we see this is a central angle formed in the center of your circle and this is the arc that it's related to. Okay, now of course, here is our angle measurement, 79.66 degrees, and this is your arc measurement. It looks like it's also 79.66 degrees and we can verify with this software that as you move this radius around, you'll notice that the angle of the arc which is this one here, this is the arc angle, and the angle of the central angle, this angle here, are the same. Okay, so that's how the central angle relates to its arc. The central angle is equal to the arc measure. Okay, so the angle formed in the center of your circle is equal to, has the same measure as the one out there. Okay, so let's put some uh, formality to it. Let's label these things. So if this is A and B and C, then we say the measure of angle ABC, okay, which is this angle right here, is equal to the measure of the arc. Okay, so we, of course, call angles, angles because of this symbol here, and arcs you put over. Okay, this would be a minor arc from A to C. Anytime you have two letters, it is assumed that you're doing the shortest distance between those two points. So the measure of the central angle is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. Okay, so this is called a central angle. It's formed in the center of your circle. It has the same measure as the arc that it intercepts. Okay, central angle. Now let's talk about an inscribed angle. Okay, a little bit different. Inscribed angle is where two chords intersect. Okay, and a chord is of course a segment that is completely contained within the circle. So a chord starts on one edge, has an end point on the circle, and ends there. Okay, so in general, here we have a chord and here we have another chord. Okay, these things form an inscribed angle. 
So this is the angle that we're talking about. This is the inscribed angle. Okay, here's the angle. It's formed on the circle by two chords. This is a chord, that's a chord. It's formed on the circle. And this is the arc that it intercepts. Okay, you can think of it as the ice cream on a cone if you wish or whatever. But this is the arc that it's related to. Okay, and of course you can make some conjectures as to the measure of this angle and how you think it relates to this arc, what it might look like. Remember the central angle, the angle here, was exactly the same as the arc. But let's come back over here to our software and see what we find. Okay, so here we have an inscribed angle to an angle formed by two chords on the circle. Let's see, here's the arc. This arc is 119 degrees. And here is your angle, 59.54 degrees. So, hmm, how do you think that relates? Let's see, let's make it nice and see if we can make it even. So here we have about 88 degrees and 176 degrees. So hopefully you can see a relationship here. And if we don't, we can actually calculate it. So I'm gonna calculate this. If I take my arc and find the ratio, so divide it by my angle, this is what we get. So notice the arc is on top, so this is the arc, and down here is the angle. So here's your relationship. The arc is always two times the angle, that's the ratio. Arc to angle is two, which means the angle is two times, sorry, the arc is two times the angle. Okay, let's write that up here in pen. The arc, that's the top thing, is twice the angle. An inscribed arc is two times the angle. Okay, that's the ratio of arc to angle. So multiply both sides by angle, arc equals two times angle. Okay, so let's come back over here to our thing here. The inscribed angle is half of the arc, or the arc is two times the angle. And that's what we just found out over there with the sketch pad with our dynamic software, is that if you have an inscribed angle, which is formed by two chords that meet on the circle, is label them. Here we have A and B and C again. So this is the inscribed angle. So we have the measure of angle ABC. The angle is one half of the measure of the arc, AC. Okay, or the arc, the measure of arc AC equals two times the measure of the angle. So whichever way you like to remember it, the arc is bigger. Okay, the arc is two times the angle, so the arc is the bigger thing. Arc equals two times the angle. This arc is two times as large, this degree is two times as large as this one here. Okay, so inside, or rather, uh, central angles are equal, inscribed angles are half. So the angle is half of the arc, the arc is two times the angle. Okay, so if you can remember those ones, then you're well on your way to doing fine, but there are two other different types. One of them is an inside angle. So if two chords intersect any place other than the center, of course, if two chords intersect at the center, then they make central angles. But if they intersect any place other than the center, then you have created some inside angles, angles that are completely contained inside of that circle. And of course, because of the vertical angle theorem, this angle on top here is going to be the same as this angle down here. Okay, so either way, you have this pair of vertical angles that are inside and this pair also that are inside. So the arc, this is the arc that they are related to. Okay, so this inside angle belongs to this arc. This inside angle belongs to that arc. Okay, we'll call this arc A, maybe an arc B. 
Okay, so it turns out that there is a relationship between both of these angles. Okay, so inside angles. So let's see, here's our arc measurements that we're talking about. So here's 95.35 up here, 57.12, and your inside measurement is this. Okay, notice it's in between. This angle is in between these two. Now the question is, how far in between? So if we do 95 minus 76, that's about 19. What about 76 minus 57? Okay, also 19. So it turns out that this angle is the average of these two arcs. Okay, an average is, of course, a sum of things divided by how many there are. So the angle equals the average of the arcs. So let's write that down. Angle is the average. So in that case, there's two things here. So one half of um, arc ABC, okay, that's the arc on top, plus the measure of arc DEF. So if we add our arcs together and divide them by two, you get the measure of the angle. Okay, so it's an average. You take this arc up here, that measure, plus this measure, and divide it by two, that gives you the measure of the angle. Okay, it's an average. The same distance to the top, the same distance to the bottom. The angle goes outside and your arcs go in here. Arc number one, arc number two. So if you're trying to find the measure of an inside angle, you need to know both of your arcs. You add them together, you divide them by two. Okay, so let's come back in here. Like it says, the inside angles are one half of arc one plus arc two. So let's go ahead and label this on here so we can see more astutely. And it does not matter where they do it, as long as they don't intersect in the middle. In fact, they do, and it's still the same relationship, only it happens to be equal. So let's see. This we'll call arc one. It doesn't matter which one is arc one and arc two because we're adding so this is arc 1, and this down here is arc 2. Okay, and this is the angle that we're talking about. Both of these, because the vertical angles are equal. Okay, same thing would apply for the, uh, in this case, left-right pair. Let's change colors. There we go. This arc, okay, plus this arc. Okay, this angle is the average of those two arcs. Okay, so the blue stuff is related this way. The pink stuff is related that way. Okay. And of course, these two angles still have to add up to 180 because it's a linear pair. So if you know this angle, you can figure out what that angle is simply by subtracting it from 180. So don't forget all of your simpler geometry that we've learned so far and apply it now to circles with arcs and stuff. We have central angles that are equal, inscribed angles that are half of the arc, and here we have an inside angle, which is the average of your two arcs. Okay, so we're talking about two arcs here, so we have an average. And our last set of angles is called an outside angle. Okay, of course, as you can guess, all of these will be formed outside of the circle. Okay, and it's formed by three different types of things, either two secants or a secant and a tangent or two tangents. So let's just draw one of them. Here I have two secants. So a secant line extends through. So here we have ourselves an outside angle. Okay, this thing right here is your angle that we're talking about, the outside angle. So let's go back to Sketchpad, our software, and let's look at it. So here I have the secant secant. So this is a two secants, two secant lines form an outside angle. Here I have a tangent and a secant. So this line on the bottom is your secant line, and the top one is your tangent because it touches in just one place. And these two are tangents, so this is tangent tangent but the angle formed by these two things is still on the outside. 
Okay, and this one is not an average. Notice I have a big arc and a little arc. A big arc and a little arc. A big arc and a little arc. Okay, so I use one example to find out what this is. So let's uh, measure this big arc. Here we go. Measure this arc angle. And that looks like it's 126. Let's measure this little angle. I can get on here. Measure its angle. There it is, 42.41. And then let's measure this angle, if we can. Okay. In this case, it happens to also be 42.241. But there's a reason that it's going to be the same. Okay, of course, unless it goes like that. Okay. Okay, so I don't want you to guess and say that it's always equal, because now look. The little arc is larger than the angle, so it's not always equal to that little arc. Okay, just because it looks like it is right here, look, now it's a little bit smaller. There, it's smaller still. So, no, the angle is not equal to the little arc. Okay, in fact, it's a little bit of a different equation. So, let's calculate. What we're going to do is take the big arc and back up. The big arc minus the little arc, okay, and then divide that by 2. Let's see if that gives us the same thing. Okay, so here we have big arc minus little arc divided by 2. This is the angle that we're talking about, so let's see what happens. But that's what it is. Here we have arc and angle. There you go. Okay, that's the relationship. Okay, even though it looks like it is, it's actually not. And you'll see it over here and over here definitely when we calculate this one. Number calculates. Oh, I need to measure them first. Measure arc angle. Bring it over here. Measure arc angle. Bring that up here. And we need to measure this angle okay, and see how they relate. So once again, here is your calculation. It's the big arc minus the little arc divided by 2. So half of the big arc minus the little arc. Let's see what that does. Over here, let's see, 51.48, and as we move this around. You can see the angle gets farther away, but it gets smaller. So let's see. Yep, here we have the angle, 80.85, and there's my calculation. So the angle is always the big arc minus the little arc divided by 2, or 1 half of the big minus the little. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether there are two secant lines, a secant line and a tangent line, or two tangents. It's always the big arc minus the little arc divided by 2. Okay, and of course, these two things will always add up to 360. These arc measures, or arc, yes, measures, these add up to 360. So if you know a couple of them, you can find out what the other ones are using your deductive reasoning and brilliant brains. So let's go back to here and write this down. So the relationship, and that's what we're looking for. The outside angle is half of the big arc minus the little arc. So let's draw in some of these. We'll make a secant secant again. Here we go, two secants. This is the angle that we're talking about right here. Okay, this is the angle, the outside angle. The angle that's formed by your secants or tangents or whatever it happens to be. Okay, so this is your big arc. This is the big arc here, whatever this measure happens to be. Here's your big arc. Big. And this one is your little arc. Okay, the one in here. Always one half of the big minus the little. Whatever those measures happen to be. And that equals this angle outside. Okay, so those are your four. The central angle, that's equal. The inscribed angle, that's half of the arc. The inside angle, that's the average of your two arcs. Add them together and divide by 2. 
and then your outside angle, which is half of the difference. Okay, it's a subtraction problem when you have an outside angle. Okay, hopefully this helps, and you have a fantastic time doing all of your geometry problems.